friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. We have a real neat project. It is a guitar that came all the way across the pond from England to the United States and then got shipped, I believe, via UPS to my doorstep. <laughs> the customer was on an extended stay over here and uh, he had been on my waiting list for quite a while, so uh, we made arrangements for him to while he was over here to uh, you know to go ahead and ship it to me It's been sitting in the shop here for more than a well not more than a month, but about a month I'm just now finally getting to take a look at it He's given me a long note here, so we'll talk about some of the issues that are on the guitar It is according to him a Gibson J 50 made in 1953 it was originally supplied by the Main Street Music in Fort Worth, Texas. I have owned it for 30 years. I bought it at Hank's Denmark Street in London. <laughs> Let's see, the guitar has sentimental value, so I would like to get it fixed if feasible, he says. I've had numerous people look at it in the UK. Their, advi their advice has varied from leave it alone to a neck reset. And I gotta be honest, I could give him both of those advices myself by looking at it, you know, I mean, really I could. I, I can see how they would advise that and it's it wasn't poor advice, you know, in my opinion. I think they were right on the money because uh, I could, it's not terrible, it's just not great, <laughs> you know. The top joint has opened up despite the uh, appearance of what uh, appears to be repairs. Some braces have been re-glued so others might be loose. It would seem that the glue uh, used to construct the guitar is beginning to fail. The top has bellied significantly. I've looked at the belly and it, you know, I, I don't think I'd call it significant. It's, uh, or, I mean, it just depends how you define that term. It's definitely bellied. Um, I've seen far worse. And uh, so I don't think it's terrible. It's just is bellied and we'll look at that in a minute. The bridge height has already been reduced, and it definitely has, to try to compensate for the belly and the top. It's also for the neck angle. The neck angle is not great on this guitar, I can tell by looking at it. So the neck reset, that's why it's on the fence on the neck reset. And the fact that the bridge has already been cut down, that's making me lean more toward a neck reset. Strings don't go through the bridge deep enough, uh, consequently the windings protrude and then they set up on top of the saddle so he has to put an extra ball on the end of the string to keep the string winding down further in the guitar. I've seen that before. The bridge plate is pretty chewed up, the frets are severely worn, the fretboard is severely worn. Uh, it sounds like rubbish, he says. It has fret buzz, no ring. Um, he says when it's uh, up in good condition, it really has a great sound. So, you know, I can understand all that. It's from John in the UK. So, John, we're looking at your guitar here. Let's uh, show everybody what it looks like. You can see, uh, you know, it's your typical Gibson. And I can actually see printed on the uh, little um, joint brace there. It says uh, Fort Worth, Texas. I can't read much more than that with my eye, I can see a serial number in there, I believe, Y4722, and then it looks like a bunch of spaces, and then a 1 and a 7. I don't think there's anything in between there, but there's two or three spaces there where there's nothing. So, I don't know, I again, I, I am not a historian, so I don't know this, the detail behind all that, but you can certainly look that up if that's one of those things you like to do. You know, overall, it's really not too bad. Uh, the neck joint itself looks to be okay. Uh, it's, I don't see where it's come loose or anything. The When I look down the top and look at the fretboard to see how it is, you know, and I'm exaggerating, but the fretboard should be at an angle like this to the top, and it's pretty flat. It's uh, it's almost perfectly flat, if not a little bit up. And yeah, let me rephrase that and say that it is actually up. So it's it's actually going the wrong way. It's it's the fretboard is like this to the top versus like that. So. 
that's not good. That means that, um, you know, they've already cut this down pretty low. I think you can see that it's fairly flat and the, and the saddle itself is fairly flat. Therefore, there's almost no string angle coming across here. Let's see if we can zoom you in on that just a little bit. So there's almost no string angle. It's just, you know, coming just, you know, so there's very little pressure down on the saddle. In fact, I can move it across the saddle and you probably shouldn't be able to do that very easily. You know, if you can move it across the saddle like that, there's very little string pressure on your saddle. So that's not good. That doesn't give you much punch in your guitar. It doesn't give you much sustain or ring or anything. So now I did also check the action and the action isn't horrible, it's just not great. Um, the action's right at 100 thousandths on the G and right at 100 thousandths on the E. I, I said G, I'm thinking of my mandolin, sorry. So, you know, the two E strings, it's right at 100 thousand on both E strings. You know, uh, if it hadn't been cut down here, I'd just say, let's cut this down and, and fix that right there. We're kind of out of options, you know. This has already been cut down, in my opinion, too far. You know, another good test on that kind of thing is to take a corner of a piece of paper and see if it'll go under there anywhere. And a corner will generally go under there if there's a problem. And, and it, you can see that it doesn't even attempt to go under there. So I think, you know, we could actually salvage this bridge. Now, the negative of salvaging the bridge is that the bridge has lost some of its own support. By the fact that this bridge has been thinned down, you know, I mean, technically the bridge is kind of a brace also, you know, I mean, but, but when you thin it down, obviously that, that brace is more flexible than it used to be. But I don't think it's been thinned down so excessive that we need to replace it. I think, in my opinion, we can still get by using this bridge, but we would have to change the neck angle to raise this saddle up. Uh, we'll have to do something on the inside there, or we'll have to look at the inside to see how bad the bridge plate is and all the braces on the inside. So we're getting ready to do that internal inspection now. Got the strings off of it, and I just thought I'd show you what that looks like. He definitely did put the extra little uh, loop on there to keep the string down. Um, I can tell by the colored uh, balls on the end there that they are uh, Diodario type strings and uh, so good strings and all that but you know when you've got those kinds of issues you, you've got to do something to fix it. Well we've got the strings off of it you know starting to see some of the other issues with it. One of the issues, uh, the, you know, this is a minor thing, but this saddle is very loose. You can just see the, the play in there. That's not good. So it, 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 you know, you turn the guitar upside down, it just falls right out. Another thing that I don't particularly like is this under saddle pickup. I know that was the thing back in the day, but I'll tell you what, the LR bags pickup that goes up underneath here and, and fits there, is far superior in my opinion. Fretboard, you know, he talked about the frets being severely worn. He's really not kidding there, but it's really more than the frets. The frets themselves, as bad as they are, I believe I could actually probably get one more filing out of those, but the fretboard is terrible. Um, it, it's got the fingernail grooves like crazy. My best suggestion is, Cut those fingernails because it's really, so this is rosewood, so, uh, you know, that is a little softer, but uh, I thought it was ebony because it's so black, but it's not. Yeah, but you can see there that these grooves are really deep. To really demonstrate how deep they are, let's just take a single edge razor blade and cut across there. And I think it'll show up even a little bit better. And I think that might even show it up a little bit better how bad it is. It's, it's pretty bad. You can't, I don't know that we can get all of that out of there. We can get some of it out. But I think at this point on this thing, uh, you know, without looking inside yet still, I'd probably recommend a, a neck reset, a fretboard leveling, and then new frets. So let's look inside and see what we have there. I'm going to start the easy way with just looking at it with an inspection mirror and I'll tell you what I see. Some kind of glue repair right here before the X brace. 
A lot of glue squeezed, spilled out everywhere. I will tell you that the bridge plate is tiny. Don't typically see one that small. And when I say tiny, it's not even as wide as the uh, bridge. It's just like that. You know, very small bridge plate. Which someone may have thought, well, that's a good thing and make the sound better. I don't know, but it uh, does not appear to be the right way to go about it, in my opinion. I can see where someone has put cleats pretty haphazardly down through here. And in my opinion, they don't look like they're in the seam that was glued. They look like they're off to the left, which is kind of crazy. A couple of them may, may actually be on the seam, but there's a couple that aren't. So where one of them isn't on the seam, let's just say it that way. I can see two that probably are, but they're real crooked. They're like at an angle and, you know, they're just... All right, now I'm going to look and see if I can see any actual braces that are loose that are obvious. Wow, there's a pile of junk back there uh, up in here. But in this area, there's a bunch of junk that looks like it's glued up in here. And when I say junk, I really do kind of mean junk. I don't know what that is. There's a short little brace here that could be loose. Feels solid. Yeah, they feel solid. I think they're okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any obvious problems on the inside. We obviously have this seam here that's definitely opened up and loose. Don't like the bridge plate that's in there. Um, I think that's one of the main reasons this is bulged. Uh, the fact that you've, you've done two things. Number one, you got a tiny bridge plate. Number two, this bridge has been thinned down. That just is a recipe for this to bow up, um, in my opinion. So I don't really see it as the bridge plates in real bad shape. It's just that it's tiny. So I've got enough to go on here. I believe I'm going to contact the customer now and talk to him about what I see and what I would recommend. And I think my recommendation, obviously, first recommendation is you got to fix this crack. But before I fix that crack, I think I would put a larger bridge plate in this. Either, either by just simply extending the bridge plate that's in there, which I think we could just get away with, or try to cut the old bridge plate out, which is not that easy because there's bolts through it. Because right here there's, there's bolts through that bridge plate. But I think the bridge plate could be bigger on the, on the front and the back. And I don't think it would hurt the sound, really. I, I really don't. Bridge plate issues, we got this crack issue. That's those, and then this crack here looks like it could be open too. We'll have to look, inspect that more right there. It looks like it could be cracked under here a little bit. I don't see any cracks along here where you typically see them. The back itself looks like it's solid. I don't see where it's coming apart anywhere. But the neck angle is the other thing, and then this fretboard. So there's quite a bit of work here, quite a bit of time involved. You know, the work is going to add up here. I, I think we're talking, you know, six to eight hours worth of work. And, you know, whether he wants to spend that or not, I don't know. But we'll, we'll see where it goes. I thought you would like to see inside this guitar before we take the bridge off and start doing all of our destructive things to show you what it looks like. And we're going inside there. You can see all the way to the back there's the uh, pickup right there. And you can see that the wire comes through here for the pickup. And then the, you can see the bolt where the bridge is bolted on and the other bolt where the bridge is bolted on. We can look at the bridge plate a little bit. I'm going to turn the camera up where I can see the bridge plate better. And yeah, those holes are eight out a little bit, I guess I would say. They look a little worse this way on camera than they did before. But not absolutely horrible although they are chewed out pretty good 
it would be nice if we could get that bridge plate out of there. As you can see, it's a narrow bridge plate. It looks wide on camera, but keep in mind, it's narrower than, than the bridge itself, which is kind of unusual. I'm trying to see here if you can see a, a patch there that's going across. And I think there's some more patches back here. You can see here's a couple of more patches and they're put in a little awkward. You know, they're just not in very straight. And I, you know, there's a lot of glue spread around that you can see. So there's there's a pretty good look at those patches and the glue spread around. We're going to see what we can do about improving all that. The customer has said he's all in on this, so we're going to go ahead and get it fixed up right. First thing I'm going to do is take off the uh, pickup because it's going to get damaged if we don't. A lot of people would force this down through the hole, but if I did that, um, it's going to break right here at this connection. And it's not supposed to be bent right there. And there's no way you're going to get that down through that hole without breaking something. So we're going to have to take it apart right here. And to do that, we'll need our soldering iron. I got my trusty little Weller soldering gun here. Been using this thing for 35 years. It works like a charm. If I wanted a pencil soldering iron, I would have one. As a matter of fact, I've had several. And I always go back to this. I love this thing. I know a lot of people just think it's stupid and hate it, but that's the people that don't know how to use them, in my opinion. Once you learn how to use these, these are the best thing that ever was made, in my opinion, for soldering. You know, it's instant heat and instant off, and it's, I love it. Now we'll pull this wire out of here. That should pull out real easy now. Okay, so there we go. Got that out. We'll put all those parts away in a bag and move on to the next step. Most of the time to get these bolts off of here, they're usually loose anyway, or for, uh, just another source of rattling. So most of the time you can just take a socket, reach in, and undo them by hand. And this one was definitely very loose. I touched it just before I turned the camera on, but I gotta take it off yet. So I'll just go ahead and take it off the rest of the way. And there it is. Very easy to do. So I don't even see what point these nuts are. I, they just, to me, it's the dumbest thing that they ever did to guitars was put nuts and bolts through these bridges. It just doesn't make sense. I dropped the washer in there, but that's not that big a deal. We can get that out later. I think a uh, piece of the uh, bracing off the back just popped out of there, which is probably a good thing. We can put that back in later. Okay, so that takes care of the bolts. Now we've got these two covers here to get off so that we can get the bolts out. I'm not worried about destroying this because we're gonna put a whole new bridge on here anyway. So, and I'm never gonna reuse this. So just get rid of it in my opinion. So I got a screwdriver here with a sharp point. Should be able to dig these out of here fairly easy. started turning it there a little bit now it came out okay so now we're done with the mechanical fastener stuff we can move on I've been heating this for about a minute or so the iron is on its hottest temperature setting I also have this iron set where it doesn't automatically turn off I took it apart and rewired it to avoid that and I have my knife under here to get it hot. This cardboard is down just as a heat shield, though the iron's not actually touching the top. That heat radiating off of it there does get pretty hot. 
I'm just trying to get the knife blade warmed up where it'll be really good and hot when we're ready to try this. A future project, which might actually be seen before this project is seen, is I'm going to be building me a specialty tool for taking bridges off. It'll be controlled with the uh, thermostat, similar to the way my side bender works, and I'll be able to precisely control the temperature of the uh, apparatus, and it'll be much more compact and fit the size of the bridge much better. And I believe it's going to work really, really well. I uh, just have it, just a concept in my head at this point. I haven't made anything or done anything yet, but uh, I've started buying some of the components, so we'll get it all figured out and put together before long. And like I said, you may actually see that build video before you see this video, me taking the bridge off. Who knows how that's going to work out. Well, it's sweating pretty good. Usually when they're sweating good like that, we're about there. Oh, it's turned it uh, milky white. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I went and got a piece of aluminum that I use for this purpose. Uh, that also elevates the iron a little bit higher yet to hopefully mitigate some of that heat going into the top. And I'm just putting some more cardboard there on either side just to shield the top a little bit more. Wow, that was a surprise, I gotta be honest. Never expect it came off fairly clean. There are a few little splinters, but not bad, really. I'll take that. Really, I'll take it. It wasn't what I was expecting at all, since it was so darn hard to get anything under there. But any little miracle that you get, you t learn to take. You can see there's a few little splintery things, but they're not bad, really. They're just paper thin. So nothing real bad pulled out. That'll be perfect. We'll get started with the next step. My approach was going to be, I was going to plane this fretboard down at an angle. In other words, the fretboard was actually going to be thinner up here than it was down here. It'll probably turn out that way anyway, whether you want to or not, because of how thick, how deep these grooves are. But, as I was just getting ready to explain that to you, I'm moving this neck, and, I, and the whole neck's moving. We need to do a neck reset on this anyway, and since the neck's loose, and it's definitely loose. I can see it moving along the joints here and everything. We're going to pull the neck then. I, I really didn't want to pull the neck. But at this point, because it's loose, we got nothing to lose. We might as well pull it. I've got a Coleman stove on the floor, and it's going to be heating up this pot of water. Then I'll put this nozzle over the pot. The steam will come up this little tube and through this little tiny basketball inflation nozzle here and the steam will come out that little tiny hole on the end hopefully you can see that I know it's not focusing on it but and then uh, we're gonna drill some holes down through here to get the steam in there so while that water is heating up we'll drill some holes actually I'll start with the smaller drill the 330 seconds and if it works out great and if not we'll enlarge the hole it's always better to go small and enlarge it if you have to. Now the trick here is I'm going to try to drill through this and hit that pocket that's in there. Odds are I'll be close. Hit it right on the money. No problem at all. Now will this go down through there or do I need to make it bigger? Ah, that'll go. So the smaller hole will work. I'm just kind of wiggling it by hand, not putting a lot of pressure on it, but just the least amount of wiggling I can do there just to, you know, keep it moving and get that hot steam in there and it'll uh, help get those parts warmed up and dampened up and I think they'll come apart. This ought to be fairly easy to get apart, as loose as it appears to be. 
There we go. That extra heat there is making the difference. It's boiling it up there now. You can see some steam coming out of the end there now. That ought to make it start percolating. Ordinarily I would take this part loose, but it feels like it's already loose and it's moving on top of the guitar, so I don't think I really have to do anything there. We can see the water coming out the back side there, so that's a pretty good sign that it's getting good penetration. What I'm going to try here is a little bit unconventional, but I'm going to take a piece of leather and I'm just going to support this with my hand and I'm going to take and just tap the back of the neck. Yeah, makes a lot of noise, but it didn't do much, I don't think. Sometimes you can just shock it and it'll just pop like right loose. That's what I'm trying for there. There seems to be plenty of moisture in there, so I don't think I need to do much more with moisture. Wiggling it back and forth. There's another brace piece that came loose from the back. I can hear stuff rattling around in there. You can see there's quite a bit of moisture coming out of that thing, a lot more than I thought went in. So. It must be uh, pretty wet in there now, so just going to keep wiggling it around. I would like to try throwing a wedge in here, but I'm afraid I would dent the top if I did that right here. See if I can tap down on it right here. That didn't seem to do any damage, so try it on this side. You gotta remember the block is in this area here, so you're just hitting in a solid spot there. Nothing's coming really loose though. I may have to get out my neck puller and try it on there. I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and modify this jig to try to be a permanent neck removal tool but you know I think they made it wrong or, or the, I just don't understand the man's direction the way he made it it looks to me like these were feet and they would sit down here and you would do it like this but the problem with that is you don't need this cut out down here you need to cut out around this here now I don't think those feet were intended to sit on top of the guitar if they were they would cause damage I believe I would prefer to have it this way where it's flat all the way across and pull it down I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna modify this or just make a new one because it just doesn't suit me some of the parts this part might suit me I don't know but but right now it just doesn't suit me the way it's built. So I think I may just make a new one from scratch and, and make a good one. So here we go. All the edges have been rounded over. Everything's smooth. Now I will sand this eventually too, but I'm going to wait till I'm done. No point in sanding it now. But uh, I'll sand the top and the back. We might even paint it. I don't know what we'll do there. We may just coat it with something. I'm not sure. Might not do anything. Now we need to figure out where we want these holes spaced to grab a hold of the body. In my, in my version, this is going to go across the top like this. And uh, hopefully I've got enough room here. I may already have a problem. I think I was expecting these to be down here further so that the holes would be right down here on these edges. And the, I'm not gonna have a lot of room, I'll tell you. So it looks like I'm gonna already have to modify my design. I was kind of using some of his measurements and they just don't seem to work out just the way I want them to. Well, I'm pretty proud of the way this turned out. It, it's pretty nice. Um, I probably could have made this a little wider right here. 
Uh, it's got enough room, and it's, the threads, you know, they, they're not touching the guitar, but they're pretty close. So what I need to do there is, is put some kind of a rubber tubing or something on this to keep that from scratching this. Um, this is just on here temporary right now. And I used wing nuts right here to tighten it up. I put a very heavy steel bar across here to pull on the neck. And that's pulling that way as you tighten it up. What I like about this one is that it is compact. It's very compact here. It's just wider than the neck so that it's pushing down on that block. You know, it's pulling up on that. So I think it's going to work. You can always make them better. And I, you know, if I made another one, I'd, I'd change this board a little bit. Like I said, make this a little bit wider. But I think it's pretty good, really. It's not too bad at all. We'll see how it works when we put the steam to her. Well, here we are on uh, day two now. And, uh, you know, this neck is loose, but I don't know why it's really having a trouble coming out of there. Sometimes just one little part of it will be stuck with glue. And the sad thing is if you force it, you'll break that part. So I'm trying to, we're going to steam it out again today. And... Uh, now that I've got this neck jig made, I want to try it out and we can see if we can hopefully gently force it out of there. Might add that you want to be cautious with steam. I mean, for a lot of reasons. I mean, obviously it's very hot and it could burn you very badly, but also because it builds up a lot of pressure. So my vessel here is not airtight and you know, I can adjust the heat quickly here if I need to, but my, you know, I would say you don't want an airtight vessel just because it can build up the steam and blow that top off of it, you know. Mine's definitely, you can see, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but there's plenty of steam coming out of this uh, pot right now here. I, I don't know if that's picking up. It doesn't look like it's showing on the camera, but there's a lot of steam coming out right here. But that's okay. I just wanted to let you know that you really should be careful with steam. It's, it's a very powerful thing. I mean, after all, it moves freight trains, or it did for years. <laughs> I'm going to loosen these up, actually. That'll let the neck work a little bit more. Yeah, the neck is really actually pretty darn loose in this thing. I just don't understand why it won't come on out. I did put tape on these threaded rods, on these two threaded rods, and on these front fret threaded rods, just in case they touch the guitar. There's tape around them, so they shouldn't scratch anything. I did sand this really smooth on the top side there, and with it spreading out the stress, I don't think it should mar the top at all. I'm thinking about putting a felt cover on that in addition, but right now it, it's not. It's just the smooth wood, and I don't think it'll create any problem, but you never know. Yeah, it's, for, boy, for some reason it's really fighting me. I, I don't know that I've ever really had one fight me any harder than this one is, considering how loose it is. I kind of think the neck block is actually loose inside there, which that's not good. I'll try tightening it back up again and see if it'll do anything. Well, friends, I'm not positive what the problem is. I do think the neck block is loose in there. I can see the binding pulling away when I wiggle this here, and I, I can see the whole binding and everything, the side and everything moving, so I'm fairly sure that neck block is loose compared to the thing, but I'm not 100% sure because I don't really feel the neck block moving, and I can't really see the neck block moving. I just, I can't really quite put my finger on what the problem is. I'm about halfway tempted to go ahead and pull the fretboard because uh, really having trouble with this one for some reason. And if you pull the fretboard, well then at least you can get to it. It's a lot of work though. I hate to pull the fretboard if I don't have to, but I can't figure it out. I... 
I feel like the neck's loose from the block down low, but not up high. That's what it feels like. By the time I fiddle with it, I might as well take this fretboard off, and then at least I'll be able to see down in there and, and see what the problem is. There's two ways you can do this, by the way. You can pull this fret out and cut, cut through the fretboard, which is not a bad way to do it. It's much faster and it'll save the customer a lot of money. I'm not really sure though if I want to go that route. That's a much quicker way to do it. That's for darn sure. I think that's what I'll do because it just it just makes more sense really than to, to pull the whole darn fretboard off. The only scar you have this way is the little tiny line through the fretboard right on both sides and it's just a tiny little scar so it doesn't amount to much. If you're having trouble with your razor saw if you pull it through some wax or push it through some wax that often helps it. You can see that the holes that I drilled did go right down in into the crack there. And I'm not really still, I'm still not sure what the problem is. Though I should be able to at least get, get to it now a little better. I do think the neck block is loose at the top, just at the top of underneath here. Which, that don't help nothing when you try and get it out. The glue is damp, you can tell when you're cutting it. Yeah, it's it's still pretty tight. I got to tell you, there's something wrong. Wondering if I can get in behind the the neck all through here. It's really for some reason extra tight. Really a tough one. This is a tough one. It's I've had a couple of tough ones over the years, and this is one of the tougher ones for some reason. Generally, I can get them out in about 15-20 minutes, but this one's we're probably already up to 30 minutes on this one, or a little more even maybe. Wow, that is hard to get down in there. All right, we've got it a lot looser than it was. It's still not loose. I'm going to go back to the steam again and see if we can't get it popped out of there that way. Well, we got the water heated back up again and uh, for the third time now. It's just getting to the steaming part here. I've got my heat gun here. Now with all the access, I should be able to get steam in there, put this really hot knife in there and create even more steam along these edges. Maybe we'll get lucky this time. Here comes the steam. Uh, got it in there pretty far that time. <clears throat> Let's put some more pressure on this neck thing and see what happens. Yeah, my bolts are turning. Doggone it. I didn't fix those bolts in tight. I should have done that. Just not easy being me. That's what I always say. I'm just holding the bolts with my pliers at the bottom down there. Just that you would like to come out in one piece. Odds are this one's not going to do that. Just foreshadowing here. Here, it's moving now. A little bit. There it came. It finally came. Okay, we're good. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully no damage. 
I kind of think it finally just gave up. I don't think it broke, but we won't know until we get this off of here. I'll show you what it looks like when I get all this mess off of here. All things considered, it came apart pretty well. You can see down in there that, uh, you know, it's not perfect, but it didn't break anything. And the same way with this, it's, uh, it didn't break anything either. I see the truss rod in there that I hadn't really noticed before. And anyway, that, uh, you know, worked out pretty well and all, all in all. It did crack right through here a little bit, but not too bad. You can maybe see it better on this side. You can see how it might have cracked a little bit right in there, but not enough to really be too much of an issue. I think we can get all that fixed and we gotta let her dry out now and then we'll start working on it. And we just about got everything apart except for the bridge plate. And I think while I've got it in this shape, I'm gonna take the bridge plate out before I start putting it back together. I think the bridge plate needs to come out of this one for a couple of reasons. That bulge in the top is part of the reason. This crack down the top is part of the reason. That crack, by the way, I mean, it's the joint where the top was joined, don't get me wrong. It's not an actual crack, but the joint has opened up all the way down through. So I would like to get everything off of that joint that I can get off. Now I'm not gonna take the braces out, but I'd like to get everything else off that I can get off. Then we're gonna to try to work on fixing that joint and fixing, making the top flat and you know, all of it all in one fell swoop. And uh, it's not easily done through the sound hole, but I think we can accomplish it now that we've got it broken down this far. Well, friends, once again, it's been several days since I was working on this guitar and uh, I've kind of lost track on the video where we're at, but in real life, where we're at is it's pretty much disassembled. We've got the neck off of it, obviously. We've got the bridge off of it. We even got the bridge plate out of it. The bridge plate popped off just like butter. I mean, it just came right out. No problem at all, which is usually not the case at all. But I did spend the money, the nearly $40 for the Stumac tool here, and I just reached in there with the tool off camera because I didn't expect it to be that easy. Grabbed a hold of it, just gave it a little pull, and it popped right off. So I think that meant that this was already loose a little bit anyway, and that's probably what caused part of the belly bulge. The fact that it's terribly undersized also card caused part of the belly bulge. So what we need to do first, I think, to put this thing back together, you know, this crack is still a little bit open, and the problem with that is I could easily squeeze it back together if I could squeeze it back together, which I can't. And the reason I can't is because there's cleats in there holding it where it's at. I've reached, I've pulled, tried to pull on those cleats with this tool. They seem to be really stuck. They don't seem like they want to come out at all. Plus, you can't manipulate in there and really get a good yank on it, you know, like you want to and be sure that you're pulling on the right thing. You know, you can you could be pulling on a good brace and you don't want to do that by just, you can't, in other words, you can't just reach up in there, grab something and start pulling. So I have to reach up there with my fingers, know that I'm on the right thing. And when I get my fingers like that, then I can't get it back here. <laughs> Once I get it on that right thing, then I can't manipulate my hand to get back here where I can get the leverage to pull. It's just a complicated problem of working inside the instrument and with large hands. If my hands were smaller, where I could get, you know, or if the guitar was bigger, whichever way, I would have more room to move my hand back. It's just one of those clumsy things. So the problem with the cleats, there's here's where the cleats are. There's a couple of cleats up in this area, which don't really bother me. There's an X, there's an X brace in here, and what I want to do is make this much larger, more like a Martin plate, and where it'll come across here and follow that X brace. So I'm making a large V brace. The problem with that is there's a crack right here and that X brace comes through here somewhere and there's a cleat on that side of it. So that cleat has to go so that I can make this bridge plate. These other two cleats up here, they don't bother me for the bridge plate. They just bother me because the crack is still open. 
I think the crack is going to remain open. I don't think I can get those out. I mean, they just, I've tried with, even with a sharp chisel, I've reached up in there, tried to push this direction and push them out. They don't seem like they want to budge at all. So I'm afraid I'm going to create more damage by getting them out than I will by just cutting my losses and calling that part over and done with. You know, the crack doesn't seem to be moving. It just is slightly open. And who knows, even if I got the... The, those cleats out of there, who knows if I could close the crack. I mean, you know, I would think I could, but you never know. The odd thing about this crack is that it's open in the middle. It's not open on the ends too much. Well, maybe a little bit on this end, but it's closed from about here up. And it's open right in through here primarily. It seems to be closed again right here where the bridge was, and then it's open again here. So, I don't know. But I do want to try to get... I do want to try to get this one cleat out that's on this short crack right here because that cleat is in my way for this bridge plate and that's what I'm working on. I'm reaching in there with this. I would tell you the tool out of the box was pretty good. It, the front edge is not that sharp. I mean it was kind of... I don't think you could cut yourself on it. I mean if you hit your hand on it obviously it might cut you but if you, if you just rub your finger across there it was kind of round. It's really hard steel. It's not, it's not uh, fileable, if you will. The file more or less skates off of it. Um, these little tiny jeweler's files seem to cut it a little bit. And so I was in there filing and trying to get this edge as sharp as I can. It's still not real sharp. But I'm, I'm hoping that that'll help me get in there and cut this cleat out. So let's come down here and see if we can have any success. So I'm going in with the tool. Now keep in mind the X brace is going through at an angle, so I've got to get over here like this to pull on this cleat at this angle, kind of. But you, you can't get a lot of leverage on this just because of the angles involved and the hole and everything. And I'm afraid to pull too hard. I mean, if I pulled with all my might, it'd probably give, but I'd probably go right straight on through through the X brace too. You, you know, there's a happy medium here, and unfortunately, I haven't found it. I, I'm really worried that I'm going to break something if I pull too hard. I'm trying to get the cor work the corner of the tool under the cleat and then pry the cleat off is what I'm really trying to do. So I'm trying to get it under there and then pry, pry like this, but it's not working real good. They use good glue, I'll say that. If I could get in there where I could just heat the cleat, I, or, you know, if I could see it, I could get it off there, but I, it's just hard. The angle and everything that it is, it doesn't look like it's going to come off of there too easily. I'm going to try my regular chisel and coming in from the angle here and see if I can chisel it off. I'm going to turn it up here. I know you can't see what I'm doing. but I made a new little heater tool, but even that, I don't think I can get in through this sound hole and get it up here. Um, it's small. It's just about the size of the bridge, but by the time you get that in there and I just don't think I can get it in there and heat just the cleat. Perhaps you can see right here is the cleat that I'm trying to remove. You can see the damage I've done to the cleat already by pulling on it. And it's not coming out of there. I don't think there's going to be room to get my hand in there with this camera and keep the camera on the cleat. That's the other problem is you can yeah, it's just, it's really hard to get it on the cleat to begin with, let alone with my hand in there. At least you saw there what I'm trying to do. Um, I was hoping to even use the camera while I'm working on it, but I don't think it's possible. It just, not enough room for my hand and the tool and the camera and everything. It's just not easy to do. That's the cleat right there. I doubt it'll stay in picture when I get in here with my hand, but I'm going to try it. There's the tool up there. Eh, it's leaving. It's just getting out of frame. Everything's backwards, by the way. 
it completely is backwards from what it looks like on screen. I mean, like completely backwards. So everything I t when I tilt, I have to tilt the opposite way of what I'm seeing on screen. It's uh, not easy. It's not easy to do at all. Yeah, I, the camera thing almost makes it more confusing. So I'm just going to have to figure out a way to get that out of there just by hand and working with it. But you know me, I don't give up easy either. So one way or the other, I'm going to get that thing out of there. Because I want to be able to put a full bridge plate in here and do it right. Well, I'm not going to waste any more footage on that until I either get a better method or something. Well, sometimes you just get lucky. I'll tell you the truth. I was just about to give up and, you know, not completely give up, but give up for the moment and think about another way to try to get that out of there. And I just heard something crack and I thought, uh oh, did I? I felt like I had had bumped the a brace on the back with my knuckles and thought maybe I knocked a, a back brace loose. And I just pulled my hand out of there to try to inspect the back brace to see if I had knocked something loose. And uh, I didn't realize this had actually come off. That's the cleat that was in there. So the cleat actually came off. I reached my hand back up in there feeling for the cleat and there was no cleat. Now that how did that happen? <laughs> so it was a total surprise. It just, when it came off, it just finally came off. And uh, I don't even, not even sure how, how I did it. But I was pulling on that at the time, so I'm sure this had something to do with it. And I don't feel anything else now in my way. I think it's smooth in there. Uh, it feels fairly smooth, so I think we're now at a point where we can make a new you know part um, these angles hopefully will be the right angles and uh, I'll look at that again and see but I think they're probably the right angles they feel tight so really what I want to do is just extend this out I just want to make this bigger I'm gonna probably add about a half an inch behind this and I'll I'll bring it down this way oh probably half inch or five eighths of an inch. So we're going to expand this significantly and we're going to expand it with a much better piece of wood. This is a piece of maple which is kind of the industry standard but to be perfectly honest with you maple is not a very resonant wood. Yes we make violins out of it. Yes we make mandolins out of it mostly because it's hard and it bounces the sound back out but on its own right, it doesn't produce very good sound. It, you know, in other words, if you were to use this for the top of an instrument, it would just sound pretty dead. All of the guitars that I've ever heard made out of maple have not been impressive, in my opinion. Now, I know the, that that's going to ruffle some feathers out there, but in my opinion, they're just not that impressive on their sound. So we're going to use a better quality wood for this. Even though we're going to make it bigger, I'll bet you it'll actually have a better sound uh, than it did with this. That piece just happens to be about the right width. That's just about how wide I would have made it. Uh, I didn't measure it. It doesn't have to be measured. I'm just going by eye. That's about how big I was going to make it anyway. So to me, we need something in this area that will stop that bow and just having a bridge plate that size right there ought to do it. I think it'll be perfect for this. I don't think you could put a better piece of wood in there than this one. Very, very strong Paduke. Now we're gonna cut this off and uh, see how it fits up in there. The bridge plate, to my surprise, the bridge plate didn't fit the angles very good. Even though it matched these angles perfectly, on this side over here specifically, as it went back to the back, there was a big gap. And so I cut a little off the front here to the back, and now it fits pretty close, but it's still not perfect. I have it taped up in there temporarily, and I'm looking at it and inspecting it and making sure it's going to be what I want. But I think I still need to cut a little bit off of it split the difference and I think it'll fit a little bit better. It fits just perfectly where I want it uh, in terms of between the uh, X bracing and that last cleat there. But to do a better job of making it fit, um, it's off by, oh, let's say, uh, 
I don't know, three sixteenths of an inch up there. So I'm going to cut a little less than that off down here, back to nothing there. And I'll just do that with the sander. And that'll close the gap up here then. And uh, I think that'll make it a little better job. So as you can see, this angle here is a little more acute than this side. Um, but that seems to match it and it keeps this fairly perpendicular to the grain. So it's going to lay in there about like so. And uh, that should be just about perfect. It's going to cover it's going to cover behind there really good. It's going to cover in front of there really good. The X bracing cuts through right about in here. So that should work great. I think this will fit much better now. Yeah, so almost perfectly tight in there now. I don't feel any crack now compared to where I was. So that's just about as good as it gets. So now I want to set up a rig to hold this really flat so that I can put a lot of pressure up against that bridge plate and, and make sure this top is really flat when we, when we glue this all together. That'll take out this extra belly bulge that's in here. It'll glue this crack together because we're going to put glue down in that crack. I, as I push down on that belly bulge, that crack is going tighter. So it's just going to fix everything by just putting this real nice bridge plate in there. And I want to make sure I keep it in this orientation. I'm keeping this side, this side is up. So when this side is up, that's the only way it can go. One of the questions I get a lot is how do you get rid of a belly bulge? Well here, this is a real flat board and you can see that there's a huge belly bulge in this guitar. Okay? And it wobbles like that across there. When I press down, it's flat all the way across there. This is how I say you have to get rid of a belly bulge. There's so much hocus pocus out there and so much, for lack of a better word, sorry, crap. <laughs> you know, there's just so much crap out there about, oh, I used uh, humidity and I pulled it, pulled the bowl, you know, whatever. It's, if, it, if it took 50 years or 100 years to pull that bow in there, a little bit of humidity is not going to take it out and keep it out. It might possibly keep it out or take it out for a little while I, I you know I'm not gonna doubt that but it's not gonna keep it out it'll pull right back in this is the one thing you can take to the bank if you want to fix a belly bulge in my opinion you have to fix it mechanically you can't fix it cosmetically if you will it has to be a mechanical fix you know, you've got a ton of pressure pulling here. So the only way you're going to combat that is to put that thing back straight and hold it straight as you put it back together. So that's what this is all for. We're rigging this up to hold it good and flat. We're going to clamp this down. Get this top good and flat first like that. You don't have to put excessive pressure on it, you just got to get it flat. Now it's perfectly flat across there. I'm even going to, partly because it just makes it set up better, but I'm going to put clamps on this back side too of the board. And it will even, and it even brings it down a little bit more too. As you can see it, it pulls it down a little bit more. So I'm putting clamps all the way around this board. Now mechanically that top is flat. Or at least for all intents and purposes, it's about as flat as it's going to get. Okay, so now, now I can put this incredibly flat piece in there while that's all real flat, glue it into place, and it should hold it. You know, it really should hold it. Um, you've got all that stuff, you know, had I glued this up in there with that bulge, then you're going to have a bulge when you're done. So this should keep it flat. It should, at least should keep it from pulling more bulge back in there. I thought I had the camera on. Apparently I didn't. I put the, uh, the bridge plate up in there with glue. It's held up in there temporarily. I've just got it stuck in there. I've got this call to go on top of it. And that'll help give me some more clamping pressure. 
And now we'll get a clamp in there. Get this all together. I don't know if I can get that in there with my hand in the way. That'll hold it temporarily. Now I'll get in there with my mirror and see if it's all where I want it. The bridge plate itself I think is fine, but the call itself doesn't look like it's lined up very well. So I'm going to try to go back in there. Yeah, it's not. I can, now I can, yeah, it's definitely better now. Now can I get my hand back out is the question and keep the call where it's at. Yeah, that's much better, I think. Now I'll go back in there again and check it again. I think the bridge plate itself is fine, but that call is just not wanting to play fair. I would like to have the call in the right place so that I can put more clamps on it and know I'm doing a good job here. That's as good as it's going to get, I think, on the call. Oh, my goodness, that's tight fit. Boy, it's hard to say. It's, I think my batteries must be going low on this because it's not showing me very good. It looks like I've got the back side of it clamped good, but not this front up here, this front edge clamped very good. So I'm going to see if I can get some more clamps, believe it or not, and get in there in between these clamps and clamp it up closer. Well, I've got so much stuff crammed down through this hole, the visibility is very, very limited. But based on the limited visibility that I do have, I think I got it as good as you can do it. Um, like, you can see how tough it is just to get the mirror in there, just between these clamps and everything. But uh, based on what I can see, I feel like I've got it clamped up pretty good. It's hard to clamp a thin piece of wood on a big flat surface like that and get it to stay up tight. You can't over clamp it, you know, you really can't. And that's why that call is so important on the other side, plus this flat board on the top too. We'll just have to give that a few hours to sit up, do its thing, and we'll get in there and inspect it better when we're done and see what we did. Yeah.